What's going on guys? So today what I'm going to be doing is bringing you guys some EPG action and the way that we're going to be discussing it is from the Titanfall 2 perspective because that's the only place that the EPG is but how I would like to see it fit in into Apex Legends and this is going to be more of a concept kind of thing. I think it may be something that we may even see down the line when they start doing DLC weapons. And this isn't actually very far-fetched since all the weapons that have come into the game as of right now are all from the previous Titanfall games. So if we're going to be seeing something like a legendary Kraber and a legendary Mastiff, why can't we see a legendary Grenadier weapon? And it could even be the EPG itself, but managing to put it into the game like Apex Legends in a BR fashion is going to be pretty difficult. Because how are you really going to balance it? I want to show you guys something about this clip. The next few kills, you're going to notice that I make a little bit of an effort to actually aim it down. So the splash damage ends up catching some of the pilots. The hardest part about using a Grenadier weapon in Titanfall 2 is typically that you're relying on splash damage or direct hits. And the direct hits with it is actually pretty hard. If you have things like the gravity start, it makes it easier. But you don't have things like this in Apex Legends, and for good reason. Because if you manage to make somebody hold still in Apex Legends, they are dead. So how do you balance a weapon like the EPG into a game like Apex Legends? Because let's think about it, what kind of weapons are they going to be bringing out? I don't think they're going to put in all the effort to put in new guns without first exhausting some of the old guns from the franchise. Plus it just makes all of us Titanfall fans that much more excited for the game when we start seeing things that we love make the crossover into the new title. The Mozambique, oh my god, what is going on there? That's a gun that can use a little bit of help. And maybe those are guns that we're going to see tweaked in the future. And there are some things I don't expect to make the game, like Phase Rewind or Smart Pistol like this guy's carrying. Whatever approach they want to take, if they want to go with new stuff or take from the source material, to evolve the game and keep it fresh in the same standard that Fortnite has set. And this game is so polished, they don't have to worry about little quality of life changes because they were already set. This is also a move that you can pull off in Apex Legends. You can grab somebody with your grappling hook, reel them in a little bit closer, and then shoot them with your gun. There's a lot of fun to be had with the abilities, not just the grapple. Did you guys see that move from uh, the character with FaZe where they made a portal in front of the enemy player and sent them back out into the storm? Like that's really tricky. And if you start doing things like that and adding in smoke or sending them into uh, a teammate's missile barrage. By the way, I miss that guy because he was moving fast. You know what happens when you move slow? You end up dying. And I think that's kind of the problem when you try to put in Grenadier weapons into something like Apex Legends when you don't have the mobility. It's a lot easier to actually land things that have a lot of splash damage, so obviously things like that would need to be tweaked. And it's always been hard for Titanfall to manage a lot of their weapons, a lot of their Titans, and a lot of their abilities. Balance changes while they were happening kind of reflect this. One of the core abilities, Phase Shift, which everybody loved, ended up being toned down to one charge versus two. That's a 50% decrease in an ability. That's huge. They even nerfed the recharge rate, just to put it into perspective, how much they thought that it wasn't actually working as intended or it was too strong. And it took about a year for this change to be made. I don't think Apex Legend is going to suffer from anything like that. I think that updates are going to come fairly quick if something's known to be broken. And I'd like to see them experiment, even if it was something like putting it in and it being ridiculously strong but it not having much ammo, maybe it only gets 3 shots. That's how the legendary weapons are, you can pick up more ammo for them. Once you've exhausted their ammo count, that is it. So things like the Kraber and the Massive, that's kind of how they're toned down but they actually come with a lot of ammo either way. And this is where you're going to see me get my Kraber. And the Kraber is a little bit slow on console if you haven't tweaked your settings. I ended up going from a 3 ADS to, um, sorry, I went from a 4 back down to a 3 because I found it easier with things like the Spitfire, R301. Just all the regular guns that you were aiming down sights seemed to be a little bit smoother when I had my sensitivity down. However, now when I move the Kraber, it is extremely slow. But the good thing about it is that you're not really going to want to try to be quick scoping people so you should be at a decent length where that kind of sensitivity is going to help you. But really that's up to the player. I already tried this. I had it with a 4-4 when I first got it. This is my first kill with the Graver but I actually found two of them on the end game and we were the last squad in that game. And I thought I'd try to show off by using two Kravers and just switching between them and shooting them off. I lost that game. Maybe not the best thing to do in this game to um, put yourself in a disadvantage where you're just running two long range weapons or two short range weapons. 
that's kind of what I'd like to see out of the Grenadiers. Very specialized, as in you can't just use it for any scenario. I think that's how all the legendary weapons should be. I've used the Massive before, and I got a couple of successful kills up close. I haven't had a chance to shoot it from far, but uh, these are things that I'm obviously going to have to experiment with. This is a squad uh, I, I've only won actually with random squads. That's how I mostly play because I just kind of jump on when I can and play when I can. But usually right from the beginning, I can tell what kind of team is going to take me far. And those are people that typically stay together. They also end up pinging things on the radar like armor, um, just good weapons and things like that. They share and they also just like to hold positions in smart places. Right now, we've all taken a responsibility to go around this circle and watch our perimeters. And this is the spot that I chose. I'm like, there's a good chance when this bubble starts moving that they're going to come from there so I decide to hold I'm going to let them do their thing and it works out perfectly I've already set up a zip line as well for quick mobility between the two building tops I think we have solid positioning and I actually feel like we're already going to win and this is just based again from the experience that I've already had with this team from the beginning we all stayed together there was one guy chatting you probably see his uh his thing move every so often uh, Calamity, he ended up uh, being pretty good at calling out, and between that, the other guy, you could tell, could hear us as well, so everything worked out pretty well. The Spitfire is incredibly, incredibly good in this game as well. The Devotion I thought was better until I tried to use it at medium range, and it's not reliable at all. The spin up, uh, the kick at range, it's awful, but at close distance, I use it where I would assume an alternator would be best. But how do you think that you would use a Grenadier in this game? Would it do high splash damage and have very limited um, ammo? Or does it have a really low rate of fire? It's something that you would use like a mobile grenade? That actually sounds pretty good when I start talking about it. You use it, you use it uh, in combination with your other primary. So you get a little bit of splash damage on them and because of the huge reload time you wouldn't be able to spam it to them again. You would have to move in with a primary. If not, you know how fast a shield recharges in this game. Between things like the phoenix kit, the big shields, the little shields, the health packs, which I think are funny. You go from uh, full health in 5 seconds or you can get a quarter in 3 seconds. So the, the timings are kind of funny in this game. It, it's hard to tell how... Um, how loaded people are going to be in regards to health in the end game. I used to pick up a lot more health and then I found out that picking up ordinances is actually a lot stronger. At least for me personally I found that when you're getting into that last fight it's really good to try to hit somebody with a grenade and then go in with your primary. Or just to have grenades in general. Inventory management in this game is actually quite hard because it does take into account ammo and sometimes people mindlessly pick up ammo that they're not even using. Like they don't even have a gun that uses that ammo. But sometimes you want to be prepared for the switch off and it really depends on which backpack you have. Do you have a white one? Do you have a blue one? Do you have a legendary one? A purple one? You know, all these backpacks are going to determine what you can carry. What can you actually fit in? Because I love having a ton of ammo, especially when you're using things like the Spitfire. It actually goes by really quick. But I also like having the ordinance. You also like having health. And one of the things that I was telling my buddy is that if we're going to be doing the long distance game, then you want to have that health. If you're going to be more aggressive and you have short range weapons, maybe you want more ordinances. You don't want to have that health that you're probably not even going to get a chance to use, or you're going to be able to replenish off of the next player once you kill them. So that's what I'm trying to get better at right now, managing my resources and actually carrying the things that I'm going to need for the time being based on what I'm looking to do, what character I'm playing. And how is my team looking to approach it? If they're going to be playing a long game, I'm not going to have very much success going in on my own in a short game. And that's one of the things that I struggle with when using the grappling hook to be aggressive. That was pretty bad. Uh, wasn't thinking quite right when it came to that phase rewind. Put myself right back in the shitter. <laughs> and that's sometimes what happens when you slingshot yourself into a team of three. Anyway, so that's your food for thought. What do you guys think we're going to be seeing on the DLC? Would you like to see more games from the original franchise? Or do you just want to see them come up with new guns? Or do you just want to see them adjust them? Because that's something that they could very well do. They ended up changing the Gravity Star to be an Arc Star. It's just little tweaks to make it a little bit better. Because slowing somebody down to nothing in this game, you just instantly die. So no one wants to actually see... Uh, Gravity Star in Apex Legends. In a BR game, that's a terrible way to just end a game. I think it would be really cool to see some of the Grenadier weapons reimagined for Apex Legends in mind. Just grab the basic concept of the gun, or just take the name, good enough for me. 
<laughs> no, if you're just going to take the name and not make it have anything to do with it, it makes no sense to have it. But I think they can strike up that uh, that nice balance. But they, they've practically proven it already. Like, come on. These, these guys made a very good BR game. And they did it in one of the most epic fashions. Like, I can't believe how this game just dropped. I, I just think that is the coolest thing ever. And between Apex Legends and Fortnite, it shows that the model works. A while back, I actually made a video called Titanfall Free to Play. And people didn't quite get why, and I, it, it, it was kind of like a loosey topic, but the first point that I made about Free to Play is that it shows that you have confidence in your game. Because if people really enjoy it, they're just gonna buy your cosmetic stuff because they love the hell out of the game. And then once you love something like that, usually you'll end up just looking, wanting to look cool. And come on, why are you gonna steal my kill like that, Auto Titan? Uh, but that's what that's what I think you do when you have a good game, and these people do, so I expect big things in the future. And one of the things that I'm going to be doing is a lot of these crossover episodes, because there's just a lot of things that cross over, and these are the two games that I'm going to be playing. I'm going to be playing Titanfall and Apex Legends, and I love that they do meet in the middle. So some of these will be crossover, some of them will be standalone. Some of the, th some of the things just kind of apply to both of them, like the grappling hook is something that applies to both games, and it's kind of used in the same way, but not. And I am going to be doing another in-depth tutorial video on Pathfinder, and you know it's going to be fun, guys. I'm, I, I do nothing but show you guys awesome clips when I do tutorials like that, because I want you guys to get an idea of what you can do in a whole lot of situations. So it's not just going to be a lot of words, I'm going to show you guys a lot of example, and that's what's something you're going to be able to tune back in for. So if you did enjoy this video and want to see more things similar to it, make sure to hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe so you don't miss any of these new videos. I think I'm going to be pretty busy in the next week between just personal life and all this gaming stuff, but we're going to make it work. But anyways, again, thank you for joining me. I'm Paper. Cut to you. And I'll see you guys next time. Good work taking out that Ronin pilot. Damn you, CC. I was working for that one hard. How are you going to play me like that? Lucky there's no friendly fire.